Very good afternoon uh, to you, Pumelelo. Now looking at uh, the markets at this stage, so nearly reaching that uh, 4,000 level mark. Now you've just recently released the African Markets Review and in that the Kenyan economy's outlook really favours uh, the equity market at this stage. Uh, not surprising given what we're seeing currently. Yes, thanks uh, for having me, Mashudu. Um, I think uh, if you look at where we've been over the last year, um, with the tightness of monetary policy, uh, the currency volatility that we saw, the, the high inflation uh, that we experienced as well, um, it's natural to think that as monetary policy is being eased, largely due to the fact that uh, inflation is coming off, um, there is going to be a significant uh, stimulus to economic activity uh, in this country. Um, as that happens, naturally, uh, corporate earnings are going to improve. Um, naturally, borrowing uh, costs are going to be coming down. Um, and in an environment in which interest rates are low, the currency is relatively stable, uh, it makes sense uh, you know, f to expect that equities are going to be outperforming uh, fixed income in that now, environment. Now, does that mean that investors should be staying away from uh, fixed income completely at this stage? No, of course not. I mean, uh, if you look at uh, the relative sizes of the, the fixed income market relative to, to the equity market, um, the equity market is much smaller. Uh, so it's natural to expect that um, investors will still be exposed uh, to the fixed income market as well. Um, if you look at banks who are the largest uh, investors in, in, in fixed income or even in, in, in T-bills, um, for regulatory reasons, they have to uh, be exposed to it. But I think what the, the point of, of, of our call and our uh, asset allocation uh, uh, recommendation is that uh, if you look at the relative attraction mm -hmm. of fixed income relative to equities from this point going forward, um, it makes sense for investors to be more, uh, to put more weight uh, towards equities than would naturally, would normally be the case. Um, uh, otherwise, um, you know, if you think about the next uh, two to three years, mm -hmm. um, if inflation uh, behaves in the manner that we think it will, uh, over the course of next year, we think that inflation is going to be very low, probably uh, ranging between five and seven percent. Um, that the monetary policy stance is not going to be uh, tightened over the course of uh, next year. Um, it makes sense that uh, as credit spending improves, uh, the economy is going to improve, uh, corporate earnings are going to be uh, supported uh, as well in that environment, and you want to be exposed uh, to, uh, to, uh, to equities. If naturally, mm -hmm. banks uh, in this kind of environment uh, will look to uh, uh, increase their exposure, their credit exposure, uh, by lending to the private sector rather than uh, buying uh, fixed income or buying uh, government paper. Like you say, inflation, we're sitting in an, an environment of a low inflation at this stage, but could this prompt uh, some play, uh, players in the market uh, to perhaps uh, chase uh, lower yields? Um, I think over the next uh, three to four months, it's, it's possible that uh, um, uh, investors are going to be chasing these yields lower. Um, inflation is still going to come down. Um, I think uh, we haven't seen the bottom yet. Uh, we're probably going to see the bottom uh, below 5%. Um, there's a lot of excess liquidity in the market. The central bank has absolutely no uh, uh, incentive. It doesn't look like it's got any intention uh, to tighten liquidity sufficiently. Um, in that kind of environment, it's natural to expect that uh, investors will be chasing these yields down. It's going to take mm -hmm. some time, of course, even if you, if you look at the banks. It's going to take some time for them uh, before they start ramping up uh, lending to the private sector. Uh, so what are they going to do with the money that's uh, sitting there idle? Uh, they're going to be deploying it in, in, this, uh, in this market. Um, so naturally, in that kind of a scenario, mm -hmm. uh, rates could uh, still uh, uh, go do lower. But for us, uh, you know, if you're an investor in this market, what we are recommending is that you should be looking for opportunities in the, in the equity market. Looking at the exchange rate, uh, seeing it uh, reach levels of about 85, we've had the central bank uh, being in the market, mopping up uh, liquidity, which is, seems to be like there's quite a lot there. So, so with a, uh, the shilling at 85, are we perhaps going to see it even depreciate even more from these levels? Um, it, over the next uh, two, two, two to three years, uh, I think it's natural to expect that the currency will be depreciating. Um, economic activity is going to pick up as, as that happens. Uh, import demand is going to pick up as well. So naturally, demand for dollars, uh, demand for foreign exchange generally is going to increase. And it's natural to expect that uh, the currency will be uh, depreciating. But it's not going to be uh, um, a disorderly depreciation like mm -hmm. we saw over the course of last year. It's going to be a gradual depreciation. 
Um, over the next uh, uh, three to six months, I don't think that we're likely to see a significant depreciation of the currency. I think uh, the central bank is still focused very much on ensuring that uh, there's macroeconomic stability and ensuring that uh, there's greater confidence in the Kenyan shilling. Uh, you know, the, the experience of last year um, is too soon uh, in people's minds and people's thinking. If the currency were to, sort, say, go from where it is now to a level of 88, 89 uh, in a very short space of time, people are going to naturally start thinking that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, here we go again, you know, uh, 2011 is, is going to be happening again. So they will be naturally in the market trying to stabilize things um, until um, the market is, uh, is, uh, is stabilized for a long enough period of time and they have no reason to worry about inflation. Um, at this point in time, I, I still think that mm -hmm. with inflation at 6.1%, um, you know, there's no reason to think that um, even a depreciation of the currency from where it is currently to any level below 90 uh, will not be uh, causing inflation, uh, inflation pressures to rise uh, significantly. Well, thank you, Pumalele. That was Pumalele Mbio, head of macroeconomic research at a CFC Stanbic Bank.